Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna vlog today. I have a couple of errands to run and I'm also finally gearing up to film the review for the Miyoko's Homemade Vegan Pantry Cookbook, long name, but I need a couple of weird ingredients for that. I'm making some faux fish recipes and hopefully I'll find those at the Asian market. I need a bunch of different kinds of seaweed. Um, the Asian market in Boulder proper is very small, so I'm gonna drive out to Broomfield. They have a huge H Mart there and hopefully I can find everything I need. So I'm gonna bring you along with me. Before we get going, I figured I would share two of the songs that I've absolutely been loving lately. Um, the first one is Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell. She's one of my favorite songwriters. Her album Blue is also one of my favorite albums of all time. I've been listening to it since I was in high school. But Both Sides Now is an amazing song and it's very sad and also happy. It's, it's complex. Give it a listen if you like really good deep lyrics. The second song I really like is by James Taylor. It's called Carolina in my mind and I mostly just like it because it makes me super nostalgic. My dad had the, actually on cassette, a James Taylor Greatest Hits uh, album and I just remember listening to the song when I was a kid and I recently just like randomly remembered it and I've just been blasting it. i have been in the gym bumping some acoustic ass James Taylor and I love it honestly. Listen to it. So we have arrived. I'm gonna bring you in, but I'm gonna switch to my uh, smaller vlogging camera first because you're watching me on the DSLR and I do not have the guts to bring this into the grocery store, so. It's practically an entire aisle of different kinds of seaweed. So we need some wakame, wakame, I don't know how to pronounce it. We need some more kombu. I had some of this for making kimchi, but I ran out. Need more of this. This is my favorite sweet chili sauce. Oh my God, look what they have vegetarian oyster sauce. What even is in here? Interesting, artificial oyster flavor. The cookbook has a recipe for vegan fish sauce that calls for this fermented tofu. So I'm gonna grab some. Yo, I want some of these. Okay, and then we also want some of this soybean skin, some yuba. Successful trip to the Asian market. They had everything that I needed except for dulse flakes, so I'll just order those on Amazon. Weirdly enough, the thing I'm most excited about has nothing to do with the cookbook review. Um, you guys know how much I love making summer rolls or salad rolls. They had brown rice paper, and they also had these super cool black sesame rice paper crackers. Especially since it's been so freaking hot in Colorado the past couple weeks, I've been making a lot of salads and salad rolls and like cold noodle dishes. Dear God, it is so hot out. The high today is only 77, which is less technically than it has been for the rest of the week. Um, but it's raining today on and off. It might thunderstorm later, so it's kind of humid and it is just, whew. If any of you have tried a natural deodorant that you absolutely love and swear by that actually works when you're sweating, when you're working out, when it's hot as balls outside, please leave a recommendation down below because all of the ones I've tried, they work pretty well if you're hanging out indoors all day or um, if it's like fall or winter and it's cooler out, but I pretty much during the summer have to keep reapplying it constantly to make it work for me, um, which is stupid. So recommendations, I would appreciate those. I'm back home, I just put away all my groceries. I'm gonna bottle my kombucha now. Everyone has been asking for an update on this stuff. I've been brewing it on my own for a couple months now. I'll link the video in which I first got my scoby. I got mine off of Amazon, super cheap. Um, so I'll, I'll link the video here with my first batch. Make sure your hands are clean when you're handling it, but mine has grown a lot. It started out like this big, and every time you brew a new batch, it just grows and grows. Um, which is why if you know someone who brews kombucha and you want to start brewing your own, you can ask them for a piece of their scoby. So it's bigger now. Um, I usually will let mine go for 10 days. I like it to be quite sour. So in my first video, I showed that I had purchased these swing top bottles from Amazon for my secondary fermentation. And I don't, I don't know, I don't really care for these. So I'm actually going to recycle them or I'm going to give them to Goodwill or something. I've been saving just the GT's bottles when it, whenever I buy kombucha from the store. I just think they're like sleeker and they take up less space in the fridge. And another thing I've been using to make the bottling super easy is this little auto siphon, which I also, I get a lot of things off of Amazon. Make sure everything's nice and clean, of course. See, the auto siphon just makes it super easy. 
I'll usually fill it up to about here. I've just been keeping my flavors really simple and adding a little bit of lemon juice and ginger. Maybe my next batch I'll get a little more adventurous with my flavors. I'd like to make like a watermelon kombucha because the one by GT is so good. So initially my kombucha was brewing so slowly. It would take like two and a half weeks for it to get sour enough. And I think I realized it's because I wasn't leaving enough starter tea in with the SCOBY when I was brewing my next batch. So when you add more tea to start a new batch, you want to leave some of what's already in there from the previous brew. It's not just the SCOBY that makes it ferment, it's all the little floaties in that starter tea. So since I've been leaving more, uh, my fermentation time has been cut down a lot. Just want to leave a little bit of space because after you bottle it, I leave these under the cabinet for a couple days to carbonate and um, you want to leave space so it doesn't explode. We'll probably do just this last bottle and then all of the rest of this I'll just leave in there as my starter tea. I need to go to the store to get more lemons to juice so I'm just going to seal them now and I'll add the juice later. Um, but I did brew my next batch of tea. I showed this at the end of my last vlog, but then I ran out of time at the end of that day, so I didn't get to actually prepare it. But this is just a mixture of black and green tea. I brewed it extra strong because this is just a half gallon, and I brew a gallon at a time. I'm just going to dilute it with water. Um, I didn't add the sugar, so I'm actually just going to dissolve. I use a cup of sugar per gallon. Um, most of it will ferment out. I'm just going to dissolve a cup of sugar in some hot water, add to this, pour it in here. I've gotten a couple requests to do a dedicated video on brewing kombucha. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. There are already a lot of great ones on the internet. That's how I learned how to brew kombucha. Um, I really like the one by Brothers Grain. I like the one by Bon Appetit Magazine. Um, so you can check those out, but I'd be happy to make one as well if you guys want. So this is basically just sugar water. I'm gonna add this to my tea, which is room temp. Of course, you want to make sure that you're not adding anything hot to your scope. It will kill it. Now we're just adding water to top it up. Cover it back up with our cheesecloth. This is several layers of cheesecloth. And I keep it in a dark place for, I usually check it around day um, 8 and then usually let it go till day 10. I also have another batch of sauerkraut going on down here. I need to make more kimchi because I've been out of my homemade kimchi for a while. Mmm, so good. While we're here, I wanted to do a quick like on-the-fly review of a couple of vegan products I've tried and have been loving lately. This is just Chipotle Ranch dressing. Oh my god, the company actually sent this to me and I was so stoked um, because I, I've never seen this one in particular in stores. I've seen their Thousand Island, I've seen their regular mayo, um, but this one is delicious. It's smoky. I put it on pretty much everything. <laughs> This is also by Just. I found this at Sprouts. Weirdly, it was in the section with uh, kimchi and like kelp noodles and all the raw desserts, so like a separate fridge at my Sprouts. And it's birthday cake cookie dough. What the? They also had just a regular chocolate chip cookie dough, um, which I believe they used to carry at Target, but Target stopped carrying all the Just brand products. Oh my goodness. I mean, it tastes like funfetti. It's just like sugar cookie dough with a bunch of sprinkles. So satisfying and crunchy. I'm sure I could make this on my own. It's exceptionally sweet, so I can really only eat like a teaspoon at a time before it's just really cloying, but you can also bake it into cookies too. I haven't tried that yet. It's just been too hot to use the oven, honestly. So I've been eating it out of the tub. If you like funfetti, Another sweet thing I've really been digging, these are Salted Caramel Snackaroons by the Laughing Giraffe Organics brand. Found these at Sprouts, they were on sale so I grabbed them. I like anything with coconut in it. Lots of different brands make raw coconut macaroons and this flavor is by far my favorite I've ever tried. Chocolate ones are good, but this tastes like straight up like Dulce de Leche or something. It tastes like there's a can of condensed milk in here. I can't believe there's no dairy. Just so buttery and caramely. I left them in my car overnight and it's been so hot out so they kind of melted and are falling apart. This one has maintained its integrity though, but oh my god, amazing. 
There's hardly any ingredients in this either. It's just coconut, coconut syrup, coconut oil, vanilla extract, pink Himalayan salt. Dude, amazing. Last thing I want to share with you, this is the Miyoko's cream cheese unlocks your dreams flavor. So it's supposed to taste like smoked salmon. There aren't any pieces of fake smoked salmon in here. Um, it's just very smoky and there's chunks of, not chunks, uh, little flakes of seaweed in there to make it kind of fishy. It smells very convincing. It tastes pretty convincing too. I mostly just get a smoky flavor. I like the texture, I like the flavor, but I personally wouldn't repurchase this because if I'm going to spend my money on vegan cream cheese, I would so rather have Kite Hill, especially their jalapeno flavor. This is good. You can see I'm almost done with it. I just probably wouldn't buy it again. I found this at Trader Joe's. I believe it's only available at Trader Joe's currently, although I know Whole Foods has a lot of other Miyoko's products, their butter, their mozzarella, their her cheeses. Uh, I haven't seen this there though. I do think it's really cool that this is oil-free. This is just cultured cashews and coconut cream and flavoring. Um, same with Kite Hill, it's just cultured, I'm not sure if it's cashews or almonds, so it's cool that there's no oil like the Daya and Tofuti are basically just all oil. I like, I like the flavor of these types of cream cheeses better. So those are my quick uh, product reviews for you. Oh, one last random thing that I'm super pumped about. I've been trying to lead a more sustainable lifestyle for the longest time. I'm not perfect, I admit that, but you know I have my reusable shopping bags, my produce bags. I always try to bring a reusable mug or a tumbler with me if I go to a coffee shop. Um, and I just got, I'm so pumped, like unreasonably pumped. These are reusable like Ziploc sandwich baggies. They're made of silicone. They don't close like Ziplocs, but they have these like slider thingies. I think it's so cool. So it's like airtight. I saw on the website that you're supposed to be able to put liquid in here and it won't spill. So let's test that. It's cool they stand up like that. Okay, it's dripping a little bit. So I probably wouldn't, I mean, I probably wouldn't use it to store liquid anyway. I'll probably use it in my pantry or if I'm like bringing snacks, like a handful of nuts and dried fruit on a hike with me, I'll use these instead of Ziplocs. Oh, I think it's so cool. I bought these on Amazon. I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. It's raining, but I just got back from a super quick jog around my neighborhood. I've been doing that lately. Like I've been trying to get 10,000 steps a day. And if it's like right before dinner and I haven't gotten them any steps, I'll just go on a really quick run. Like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes and running this way without specifically needing to uh, hit a certain distance or length of time, just like kind of going however long I feel and stopping when I need to has been so much more fun for me. So it's cool. I'm gonna go downstairs and make dinner. Hey guys, it's a different day. I was going to close the vlog by showing you what I made for dinner that night. Um, I ended up making a stir fry out of green beans and then I had leftover fake drumsticks from this Asian market in New York. I did a taste test of all of their products like a couple months back. I'll have it linked here if you missed it and are interested. Um, but I had frozen those after the taste test and I cut them up and made a stir fry out of them. So I was going to show you what I made for dinner but as I was prepping that, um, I got a call from one of my oldest friends actually. I've known her since middle school I think. We used to go to CCD together for those of you who were raised Catholic. Um, just all the courses you need to take to get confirmed. And we've kind of kept in touch since we both went our separate ways for college. Um, and she's getting married in August. Or she's not technically getting married. She's doing an engagement ceremony which in Vietnamese culture is a huge deal and I didn't actually know that. So I hadn't bought a ticket because I thought it was just like a fun engagement party and then we talked and I was like oh this is like a huge deal. So that I like went on and bought tickets to go to Palm Springs next month uh, last minute so that's cool and that'll be fun. So I ended up uh, talking to her for about an hour while I was making and eating dinner so I didn't film it which I apologize for but um, just wanted to hop back on. Thank you for watching the vlog and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.